Back in the garage today. In the garage. Back in the garage. Back in the garage today. What's going on guys? Back in the garage today getting ready to change the oil on my 2008 KTM 990 Adventure. A couple of things to note. You're going to have to remove the fuel tanks. If you need to know how to do that, there's a video. I'll link it right up here. The other thing, I was suffering from a terrible sinus infection, which you may hear in my voice. And also, there were maybe a part I forgot to film, but we'll make up for that in the video. I'll walk you through the entire process. I apologize in advance. My head wasn't all there, but I got the job done properly. Also, my hair length and outfit may change throughout the video because it took place over a few days. So uh, anyway, let's get to work. Okay, so with the tanks removed, next thing we need to do is get the skid plate out of the way. We're gonna start out here with uh, two 10 millimeter bolts on the front. I'm just gonna use a T-handle, you can use a socket wrench, whatever you wanna use. Okay, so to get the rest of the skid plate out of the way, we've got a 10 millimeter bolt on each side here. We're gonna pop those out, get the skid plate out of the way, and then we can start draining the oil. All right, so with our drain pan placed underneath the bike, we're gonna get a 19 millimeter socket and ratchet. Got that broken. There should be a crush washer on the back of this. We're just going to let the oil drain right down into the pan. There's the uh, crush washer on the back. We're going to put a fresh one on before we put this back together. Also, just for better airflow, it's a good idea to you know, take this all the way out. Just crack it loose so you can get some airflow down in there and help push the oil out. All right, so while that's draining out, right underneath the clutch, we have an oil screen and there should be two eight millimeter, eight millimeter bolts we're gonna take out right here. I'm not gonna be able to get you a very good angle, but I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. So this is a little plate. There is a, there's a little, can't tell if there's a gasket on the back of there or not. It just looks like it's oil. Uh, you'll see some more oil draining out here. There is a gasket it just stuck to the side of the engine. There's the gasket. We'll set that here for a second. And then we might have to grab a pair of pliers, which looks like we're going to. And we just want to pull this little oil screen out. This helps with filtration. That's what the screen looks like. Now we're going to clean all this up with brake cleaner here off camera, but We'll get that out of there for now. Now we're over here on the left hand side of the bike. Our next drain area is right here. We need to pull this plug out. I'm going to have to let this drain over here first because it's not totally done yet. Or I can grab another drain pan and put it underneath here. I'm going to pull my drain pan over using a 13 millimeter ratchet. We're going to bust this drain plug loose and drain the oil out of this tank as well. All right, so while that continues to drain, this is a magnetic plug, so we want to make sure to clean this up in most cases, but we're actually going to make a modification to this bike so we don't have to take the left-hand side of the tank off anymore. Now, technically, the factory calls for lowering this piece out too because it is a little bit lower. We're not going to do that today, but if you need to, that's two eight millimeters. You'll pull this screen down out of here and let that drain out. I've done that in the past. It's a very small amount of oil. Um, and we're just going to try to get away with not having to take the left hand side of the tank off anymore So once this finishes draining, I'll show you our next modification If you're going to end up replacing this, just clean this up, put a new crush washer on and uh, pop her back into place Alright, so this is something I picked up from CJ Designs I want to say it's around 100 bucks. It's a stainless steel uh, braided hose What we're going to end up doing with it here in a minute once this finishes draining We're actually going to thread this up here and down here on the bottom, we have a drain plug, and it's actually safety wired. So if you want to run safety wire through it, it's safety wired on the bottom plug and up here so you could lock it into place. We're going to spin this in, then we're going to use a zip tie and put it down in place somewhere. So when we have to go to drain the oil next time, we can leave the left-hand side of the tank on and just take out this drain plug that will be down here around the skid plate area, and we'll have access to it to drain this tank so we don't have to take the right hand side tank off in the future. Now what I'm going to do to make sure I don't uh, cross thread this is I went ahead and took the top part apart. I uh, just threaded this piece out of this piece. So we're going to go ahead and thread this in and then we'll put the actual hose in. Alright so with the top piece threaded in now we can thread on 
the hose and then we just want to make sure we've got a good and tight seal on everything. We'll use a couple of wrenches to tighten everything up before we start putting the oil back in this thing. There we go. Now we just need to find a spot to feed this down through. So in staying on the left hand side of the bike, we obviously have the new drain hose in place. We're going to take an eight millimeter and we're going to remove the two bolts. You can use a T-handle socket wrench, whatever works for you. We are going to pull out the old oil filter. We're going to put in a new oil filter. This is obviously the part I forgot to film, but I'll show some stock footage. You want to put it in rubber gasket first. And then we're going to torque those two bolts back down once it's fully drained to six newt meters. All right, so with our oil screen good and clean, this is the top side. If you look, you can see you've got these bottom two ridges facing down. We're going to feed it back into place, make sure it's all the way in. The other thing we need to check here is on this piece, we just need to, you know, we'll clean this up a little bit, get some of that old oil out of there, make sure. Your gasket or you know your seal is in good shape and then we're going to set it back into place and then get our two eight millimeter bolts just start those by hand and then get those tightened down all right last but not least we're going to put our drain plug back in uh, it is best to use a new uh, crusher or a new uh, copper crush washer. If you don't have one, you've only used it once, you can flip it. Uh, we'll get that back in and then we're going to get that torque down to 35 newt meters. All right, so with everything back in, finally we need to start refilling the bike with oil. Uh, it calls for three liters, so we're going to dump all of that in. And then the other thing we want to do is once we get this done and we get the bike back together, you want to start it up, let it run for you know a minute or so, and then pull your dipstick out and check, and then add oil accordingly if it's not where it needs to be on the dipstick. All right, so I recommend putting in about two and a half liters. We're going to spin this back down, get the bike back together, start it up, let it cycle through, and then we'll probably have to add about another half quart. All right, so with our skid plate, we're just going to set it back here and get those two 10 millimeters just started on each side, just barely threaded in, and then we'll tighten them down. All right, so I've got my fuel line back on. I've got my petcocks open. I have no fuel leaking, which is a good sign. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, check my oil level real quick since everything's hooked back up and then we'll get back to the skid plate crash bars and finally have this bike back together. All right, so one thing I just remembered that you may not have to do, but because when I did the oil change, I put this CJ uh, Designs drain hose on it. Now my tank bracket won't fit. So basically what I'm going to do is uh, take a grinder and get rid of this, uh, this piece right here so that I've got clearance to uh, work with that new drain hose. So uh, give me a minute, we'll come back. So this is what it looks like after I took the grinder to it. I, uh, you know, I took that corner off. So uh, I'm gonna test fit it up here, see if we've got clearance. And if we do, we can start to get in this tank bracket back on. All right, we can see the tank bracket fits. Next, I'm gonna grab my skid plate, pull it up. We're gonna use these two collared bolts. They are a little different than some of the other ones. They've got 10 millimeter heads on them. So we're gonna get those in place. They go right up in the bottom here. Uh, it's kind of hard to miss. All right, guys, so that is how you change the oil on one of these KTM 990s. Hopefully, I made it a little bit easier in the future by installing that uh, JD Designs. Uh, make sure you check out the um, tank removal video because I did have to modify the, uh, the plate down there on the tank. Uh, it took like three minutes to do. So, um, uh, like I said, start the bike up, uh, let it run for a minute, and then top off your, uh, your oil tank over there. Uh, just check the dipstick, and once you got it at the right level, you're good to go. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider that subscribe button, because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any questions about the oil change process, let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.